Cheers and welcome. I'm Hotter Duck and these are 10 tips for your economy in Hegemony 3 Clash of the Ancients. I wanted to help more people get into one of my favorite games. Um, if you want step-by-step uh, -step gameplay, I'm going to link my um, Let's Play on Expert Difficulty in the description. And I'm also going to um, put a link there to a playlist with all of my tips videos for Hegemony 3. If you have any questions or tips of your own, then please leave them in the comments. And now let's get to the tips. What bonuses should you give your ruler and general? Well, first of all, think about the units that your faction has. If you, for example, play with the Etruscans over here, then it might be a good idea to go for a mix between missile damage and melee damage, because the Etruscans have axemen that can throw their axes, therefore missile damage, and that can fight in melee, therefore melee damage. Generally, it is um, a good idea to think about your starting position. If you're in a very perilous starting position, like for example, the Sabines over here that are surrounded by enemies all around, um, then you might want to go for a combat general so that you can fight your way out of your precarious first starting position. If you are more interested in the long term, then it might be better to forego combat bonuses and go for something like tax output, for example. Because that's very, um, very useful. Just consider 45% tax um, to how much money that amounts in the long run. Um, what I tend to use most and find most useful is XP earned in combat. That way you will be able to um, attach your general, train one unit up, then attach your general to another unit, train that unit up and so forth. And that way you will get a pool of very, very good units. After playing for a while, you might have captured all the resource buildings around you. And then there's the question, um, what upgrade to build? There are two types of upgrades. Um, if you have a look at the upgrades that we can have, you can either build um, something to increase resource production and reduce repair time, or something that increases the worker capacity and increases repair time. Now, what should you build? Um, depends on the type of economy that you're running. If you're using a lot of your own workers, the workers that you can build in your cities and that you have to use recruits for, then the first type of building is better. Increasing resource production by 50% will allow you to put out significantly more for the same cost. These workers cost 10 gold per week. Whereas if you're running a slave-based type of economy, then you do want the living quarters upgraded because then you can put more slaves in there and you don't really care about um, being as efficient as possible because the slaves do not cost any upkeep. The only cost that they have is food. So keep that in mind. As long as you're using your own workers, um, go for the efficiency boost and if not, then go for the living quarters. If you're running out of storage capacity in your cities, for example, for food, because you had a very good harvest in autumn, then you can also store food in camps and in bridges. And to do that, you have to um, line them up, uh, connect them to the logistics network with a supply line, and then um, your people will automatically store food in your camps and in your bridges. Um, whenever they have surplus food that they cannot store anywhere else. If you conquer cities that do not belong to your faction, for example, the city of Sisera that I conquered here as Rome, then you will have more difficulties to keep these people happy. They might want to rebel. Uh, you can see the rebellion risk over here. That's the rebellion devil and that's the city morale. Now, a good way to keep this up is to build hostages. You can see that we're gaining plus 100 from hostages. How does that work? Well, if you con conquer an enemy city, uh, you can build hostages as a civilian unit, Etruscan hostages. You recruit them. These are the sons and daughters, I, um, I imagine, from noble families of that city. And then you send them to a native city of your faction, or at least out of that city. So they are removed from them. And I imagine that you just tell them, misbehave and we're going to kill those hostages. And as you can see, my Rome is completely filled with hostages of all the cities um, around it that I have taken over. These guys will eat some food. But other than that, they actually do represent a good way of keeping cities down without having to constantly supply them with units. 
they will do they will do a good amount to keep this to keep the city morale up. If you are in a pinch and you have a desperate need for money, there is a way to get it. Click on one of your cities and go to the trade tab. There you see this button, Levy Taxes. That allows you to immediately collect a one-time sum of gold from the city at the cost of city growth and at the cost of pushing up its rebellion level. Click on it. Uh, it's going to show you the amount of gold that you get. We're going to do this once. We gain 200 gold and we can do this a second time. And if we do it a second time, it will actually drop the city level because it eats more city growth um, than we have in there. You can only do this um, below a rebellion level of 60, but it can definitely be a very useful thing if you are in a desperate situation. Specializing cities is the way to go in Hegemony 3. I am playing as Rome. This is a very advanced game. And you can see that I've built my cities out differently. Rome is a city that mainly pumps out highly uh, high level infantry units so i have a training ground to increase the xp for new units and to give the city more recruits and a high recruitment rate and then i also have the high level barracks in there to mm. allow me access to all mm. the high level units ostia is my harbor my war harbor to allow myself ship construction i haven't researched all the ships but it will allow me to construct construct light warships and transport ships in there then i got lenuvium that is mainly a city that is trying to provide passive bonuses that's why i have the library and the market to increase more tax and to increase the tax from that um, anagnia this is my cavalry city i have the cavalry stables in there and then I also have the training ground to give new cavalry units increased XP and to give the city more recruits. And then I have Carasioli. These are my native cities, the native cities of Rome. Carasioli is another um, infantry city to basically allow me to send units um, down south. Carasioli is sending all the infantry units in the southern direction and Rome is sending all the infantry units in the northern direction. So uh, yeah, these are about the cities that you that you might need if you wanted to specialize your cities. Obviously, cities of other factions do have different needs. You want to keep their morale high and you want them to assimilate um, to your own culture and all that. But for your own faction cities, do specialize them. Pushing up the food that a city gets increases its growth and is well worth doing, especially for the cities of your own faction. Have a look at Clusium over here. Um, if you go to the Trade tab, which is that one, um, you can um, select how much food a city gets. This has implications for its morale. Um, more food, the higher the morale, the higher the taxes and the recruits, the amount of recruits that you can get from the city. Plus, as you can see, as I move this, the population uh, growth goes up and up and up and up. So. Um, this is well worth doing, especially for your capital city and then later for the cities that are of your own faction to sort of grow them. When you're ready to upgrade all your resource buildings with one of the two upgrades, either the efficiency increase or the increase in worker capacity, then I recommend that you go for the logging camps first to upgrade, just for the simple reason that these upgrades actually take a lot of wood. Um, to do so upgrading those logging camps first will give you the wood to upgrade all the other buildings It can be beneficial to go through your diplomacy tab from time to time There are only two diplomatic states in the game. You either have a truce or you're at war with someone and Sometimes other countries are willing to pay for the privilege of having peace. So these guys I would have to pay them These guys we already have a truce so I could declare war I would have to pay 26 for peace with these guys. Um, some knights, I would have to pay them a lot. Uh, but these guys, for example, would be willing to pay 20 um, per week. So if I do that, I get a free 20, um, a free 20 gold per week just for not fighting them. And obviously I can always declare true uh, war later. So it is basically free money until you can um, find time and the troops to attack the people that you made a truce with. For better or worse, slaves are the lifeblood of your economy. Yes, you can build worker units to work in resource buildings, but really you can't waste your um, citizens' 
and the precious recruits to use them on workers. So what you try to do is you try to fill all your resource buildings with slaves. Slaves do not cost any food, um, they do not cost any money, all they do is work. Now how do you get slaves? There are a couple of ways to get um, slaves. One, you can capture defeated enemies and they will be taken, taken captive and converted into slaves. You can also get slaves by capturing enemy resource buildings. The workers in the resource building will be converted into slaves. Ten of them will be killed or half of them will be killed and the other half can be sent uh, to work on your own nefarious purposes. The third way to get slaves in the game is to buy them from a slave market. You have to research this first. In the economy tree you have to um, research any two of these tags and then research the slave trading tag. Then you can build a slave market in one of your cities. It looks like this and it has a certain capacity for you to buy slaves from. You can buy the slaves from uh, the non combatant unit tab, go in there, go to the next page and there you can purchase slaves. The price of slaves depends on the amount of available slaves. Currently we have 96 available in the market. If I buy 20 then the price goes up and the amount um, of available slaves goes down until we cannot purchase anymore. It will slowly regenerate once you've bought the market um, empty. And in the same way you can sell slaves that you've taken captive in combat as well for some, for some money. Hooray! You made it to the end of the video. If you found it helpful in any form or fashion, then please consider leaving a like so that it can show up in search results and help even more people. Um, if you're interested in Let's Play um, footage, Let's Play content or in more tips and tricks videos, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I do daily Let's Plays and I try to accompany them with uh, tips and tricks uh, videos like this one. Um, also, if you want to learn more about Hegemony 3, then have a look at one of the other videos that I did for this. And I hope I see you in one of my series. If you have any questions or tips of your own, then please leave them in the comments. And I hope I see you around. Thanks and bye bye.